came from Beyond Midnight. I'm Josh, this is Joe, and we're coming to you from my video store, Beyond Midnight, where we bring you the movies that time has otherwise forgotten. Tonight is a really, really good movie. I'm not joking, I really like this movie. Good. 1974's Phase Four. This film is a trip, especially the ending. Okay. All right, this is gonna sound dumb, but go with me. <clears throat> okay. It's about super intelligent ants taking over the world. Ants. Ants. Are they giant ants? No, this is not like Empire of the Ants or Kingdom of the Spiders. You know, nothing like that. Kingdom of the Spiders, that's crap. It's my store, I can do what I want. But the super intelligent ants taking over the world. Really intelligent script, really great direction by a... Fr uh, I don't want to... I hesitate to call him a first-time director, okay. but it's Saul Bass. He basically got famous making title sequences for movies like Psycho and Casino and things like that. Okay. This was his first feature, first and only feature. He does a great job. Now keep in mind, this is 1974. There's no CGI. All the ants are real. Oh, well, that's cool. Okay, he does amazing stuff in this movie. I don't know. I honestly do not know how he shot a lot of this. These he gets real ants to do things that. I, I, I'm, so, I'm so surprised he's able to get. He like, had to had, like an animal trainer training animals to do certain things, or he just. He gets whole, whole swarms of ants to do something, and I don't know how the hell he does it. That's pretty it's, cool. It's really, it's really interesting, but this movie is a truly good movie. It's, it's really intelligent. You're never going to guess the ending, I will tell you that. Kind of like okay. God. But unlike God told me to. This has a relatively coherent script, and it's really intelligently done and really well paced. But directed by Saul Bass, stars Nigel Davenport, who okay. most of you out there aren't going to really know, and uh, Michael Murphy, who most of you will recognize from things like Future World, and he's been in, God, i got to think, a hundred different movies and TV shows. He was uh, Peter Berg's dad in Shocker. I don't know, that's where I recognized him from. But this is a really cool movie. You need to, to check out Phase 4. So, don't give me that goofy smile. You no, know, I mean, this sounds pretty good. It's not as complicated as God told me to. I don't think any movie could be. Well, it seems to have direction. I'm very curious to see how he pulls this off. Yeah, and, and just keep a lookout. It's listed in the movie, but of the phases. Phase 1 through 4. Phase 4 in the movie is pretty damn cool. So, this is phase four. 1974, Saul Bass, super intelligent amps taking over the world. Go to the movie. Watching the events in space and wondering what the final effect would be. Astronomers argued over theory, while engineers got pretty excited about variables in magnetic fields. Mystics predicted earthquakes and the end of life as we knew it. came, it was almost unnoticed, because it happened to such a small and insignificant form of life. One biologist, an Englishman, Ernest Hubbs, saw something, got nervous, started investigating. 
While I was playing around with number theory at the university, Hubs was already onto something. Ordinary ants of different species were doing things ants don't do. Meeting, communicating, apparently making decisions. By summer, the rest of the world had moved on to other things. But Hubs kept making notes while the threat grew. Only fragments of what he knew got out. He kept most of it to himself. So when I got into it, I didn't know a damn thing. Memorandum to R. Flanders Smith, Secretary, National Science Foundation, Committee on Biological Controls. From E.D. Hubs, Senior Fellow, Coronado Institute. Subject, Biological Imbalance in an Upland Arizona Valley. Facts on hand. Traditional antagonisms among several ant species have come to a dramatic halt. At the same time, 
there has been an apparent disappearance of those insects which prey on ants, specifically mantises, beetles, millipedes and spiders. If these conditions persist, they must inevitably lead to increases in ant population. An immediate full-scale attack on the threat of biological imbalance to other life forms in the subject area. Mode of operation. An experiment station to be built and maintained with equipment sophisticated enough to control the problem and any potential consequences. Personnel. One senior scientist, myself, plus one associate a qualified information specialist with cryptological background. In this connection, I have been impressed with the recent work of J.R. Lesko at the Naval Undersea Center at San Diego. Location of installation. It is suggested the experiment station be placed in the locale of the most recently observed phenomena. Conclusions and recommendations, speed is of the essence. This is the place. This is the place. This is it. No bodies, I hope. The population moved itself out some days ago. got some pretty powerful friends. Just another desert development which did not develop. You did your major work applying game theory to the language of killer whales. Well, it seemed cheaper than applying it to roulette. <laughs> did you actually succeed in making positive contact with the whales? Only with the emotionally disturbed. How were you able to determine that? We talked. Is that a joke? Look, I'm sorry. I'm strictly a pencil and paper guy. I wouldn't know the front end of a whale from a hole in the ground. I know that games are your business, James. You play them very well. That's why you're here. But this is a serious game. 
Well, that's the best kind, isn't it? Wednesday, three o'clock. Further discoveries this afternoon on a nearby farm to be added to those observed earlier. I might have pointed them out to Lesko, but it will be better to let him learn at his own pace. There are certain equatorial ants that will attack anything, insects, mammals, anything at all that threatens their food supply. The smell triggers their behaviour. Yeah. They are picky eaters. we're doing, we're running line from these fuel tanks, and if those ants get over that water trap, we're going to set fire to this here ditch and watch them all burn. What do you think? You've done a lot of good work. I'd say they started pulling out three, four weeks ago, a couple of families at a time. What else? That's about the size of it. I guess there must have been some kind of infestation, but, well, I couldn't say for sure. Maybe the heat got too much for them. There's a collapsed house down there. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I didn't really get to know those people. They were, they were city folk, mainly. Tell me about the Taz. Don't know, wasn't there. Of course, it's been a dry year. You know, we do get ants in dry years. Mm. I talked to an entomologist up at the State Department of Agriculture one time. He said these things were cyclical. They weren't talking about those ants. Mildred, come on out here. That's all right. It isn't all right. These people will think I've got you chained up in there. These gentlemen are from the university. They're going to develop a new spray for those ants. You know what I think. <laughs> you know, if she didn't have something to worry about, she wouldn't know what to do with herself. I'm afraid you're going to have to leave for a few days, Mr. Eldridge. Evacuation? Look, I... Mr. Eldridge... I, I, I don't understand this. It's for your own protection. Evacuation? What's this all about, anyway? Why, this isn't right. They can't just push us off Didn't our own land. Didn't you hear what the man said? It's for our protection. When did they get their farm back? I've been 
depends. Friday, 8 o'clock. The zone should now be clear of population. We can proceed with the next step. The facility is completely self-contained, except for a primary power source. And the generator in our truck supplies this. The experiment has begun. What's wrong? Well, I guess they're not ready to play yet. I'm sorry, this is not a precise business. Well, can you give us an estimate? We cannot study the ants until they make an appearance. Can we put you down for ten more days? This is not a controlled experiment. In our judgment, another occurrence in this area is highly probable. But we cannot command the ants to appear. Well, is there something you can do to hurry them up? Well, we have been thinking about that. You know, of course, there is concern over possible outbreaks in other areas. Uh, I share that concern. Uh, my associate, Mr. Lesko, has something to say. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to call Miss Dobson, D-O-B-S-O-N, at 662-0799 in Los Angeles. Tell her not to take the plane to Vegas on Thursday. Tell her it'll be a couple more weeks and uh, she'll hear from me, okay? Did you say a couple of weeks? That's right. Mr. Lesko, that's not going to be possible. According See what I was talking about? How, I mean, to a degree, it almost looks like it's just like an, an ant documentary at this point with a weird science fiction overtone. A bit. But trust me, that's going to change. Okay. You know, th this movie has a lot going for it that I don't that I think people are unwilling to to look past. You know, they're unwilling to look past minor little things like right. you know the obviously outdated technology. Oh well, yeah. You know things like that, and somewhat Michael Murphy's hair. He's got very much of 70s white man hair. Well, that's not 
I don't think anyone will notice the movies. But one really cool thing: the family we saw, right. the mom, she's the voice of mother in Alien. She's the voice of the computer. So that's pretty cool. This this whole this whole movie is basically going to be three characters. Okay. Minor plot spoiler: there's the daughter. Okay. From the family, right, and then Nigel Davenport and Michael Murphy, which are Hubs and Lesko. Okay, Hubs is the senior scientist who. Uh, he's uh, the H Hubs is the British guy. Right, he he's the one who noticed the phenomenon and is studying it, and he recruited Jim, the younger guy. Lesko. Lesko. Yeah, James. James recruited him because he's good with the communications, computer, right, and cryptography and deciphering code and right. things like that. And okay. one thing I think is is really cool is the fact that they have that great narration that. The scientists were all watching this strange alignment of the moon and sun and the planets, right. and then they thought nothing happened. Yeah, people were expecting like a 2012 thing. Right. Do you mean 2012, the disaster movie, or 2012 of Palin runs? No, I mean like 2012. Because where either way, it's a disaster. Well, I mean something's going to happen on this specific event or time, and nothing happened. You really think the Aztecs knew about Palin way back then? No. Okay, but but what I like is the fact that the ants. I think they word it as, we didn't even notice it because it happened to such an insignificant life form. Right. I think that is really cool, that, that they something as small as ants. And, and that the fact that they didn't go Empire of the Ants, Kingdom of the Spiders, you know, Kingdom of the Spiders didn't have giants, but you know, Empire of the Ants style where they make giant them style ants yeah. that are biting people in half and whatnot, that they keep them little, little ants. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. Everything they're capable of, but organizing them into one... One entity, right? Sort of one. Well, and, and then, of thought. well, and then they even show. Uh, I believe it's like a spider that they all gang up and eat. Yeah. And uh, um, little, little spoiler: they're going to do the same thing to a rat or a field mouse later. But you know, just do you see what I'm saying about how did they film this? How did they get a spider? to stay in front of their camera while a whole bunch of ants ate it. Because it was clearly moving, so it was not a dead spider. I thought it was moving, and then maybe it... Uh, well, I'm sure it died long before they reduced it to goop. But, right. you know, it's... it's pretty. I don't know how in the hell Saul Bass very shot good. this. So, this is a really cool movie. There's more cool stuff coming. Let's see some activity!
this is really interesting. You see, what I do is I get to the parameters of the problem by breaking down the movement of a vector of a single ant unit. Now, I don't know what they're doing. I don't care. I'm just breaking down their simple, basic move. Stop. Go. Turn. Duration. That's it, period. Okay? Now I take my ant signals, I run them through the digitizer. I record them on tape, I write them down, and I search for a correlation between what they say and what they do. Now, assumption. What we're seeing and hearing are commands being directed at the central mass. They warned us. Relax! I forgot to turn out the light. <laughs> Stop! Cut it out! What's the matter? Cut it out! Oh, look! Come back here! We've got to get it! God damn it, will you sit? Stop! Stop! They're all over the place! Please, take care of the women! Now I make various adjustments. Make up for time lag and a couple of other things. Don't worry about it. And I come up with... Are you ready for this? I come up with a positive correlation on the order of 80% between this little squiggle and the command we commonly know as stop. And a positive correlation between that little squiggle and go. And that means these little mothers talk to each other. Now I think if I... Hey, the light! They've got into the generator. Don't move. The backup unit cuts in automatically. Now, I'm going to counter with 100% yellow. Letting some get away. Maybe they've learned something.
Come over here, James. This is really fascinating. People are dead back there. Yes. A tragedy. I don't understand it. They accepted the order. Why should they come here? Irrational behavior. Very sad. Now just look at this, James. Consider the execution of this maneuver. In order to explode the generator, they had to create a living chain... Listen, Hubs, those people are dead, don't you understand? People get killed sometimes. I think this yellow should hold its potency for three or four days. We can start collecting now. They are not individuals. They are individual cells, tiny functioning parts of the whole. Think of the society, James, with perfect harmony, perfect altruism and self-sacrifice, perfect division of labor, organized for preordained roles. Think of the building and elaborate and complex structures according to plans that they know nothing of and yet execute perfectly. Think of their ability to evolve and adapt in ways that are so beautiful and still so unknown and all contained in one simple form so defenseless in the individual so powerful in the mass <laughs> well let's begin but the first behavioral series, heat, cold, isolation, starvation, slow pressure, and threat. Mantises prey on ants, as you know. Now, if, if you're still with us, Jay, when are we going to get her out of here? That's going to be a little difficult, I'm afraid. Um, turn on the microphone, please. Call in and have them send out a helicopter. I'm afraid the bureaucrats will be rather unhappy to 
a lot of our casualties. Now, mantises are at this end of the maze, and the ants are at the other. What are we going to do with the girl? What is your concern with her? She's in shock. We can't just... She's Please. a kid. Don't shout. This is a problem that will have to be dealt with over the next few days until we're finished. If you won't call the vase, I will. I'm very much afraid that that will end our mission. Screw our mission. I finished eating. You know, I don't know your name. Oh, oh Kendra. I'm Jim. That's Dr. Hubbs. Come in. Come on. You sort of had a close call out there, didn't you? How do you feel? Well, I'm ready to go home now. Uh, I'll send a message today. Somebody will come along and pick you up tomorrow, if that's convenient. They killed my horse. Kendra, I'm sorry. Back away. Don't touch anything. Sorry. That should do it. You've been bitten. All right, before we go on about the movie, Videoscope Magazine. This is an awesome magazine. The kind of films we're showing you, they review, they talk about, they interview the people. So check out Videoscope. It's a really cool magazine. But now, one thing I, I thought was pretty cool is those towers, those very 2001-ish style yeah, the towers built that these the towers. Build. And then Hubs goes and really pisses them off by blowing them up. Yeah, well, they're, they're sitting out there waiting for some sort of audio, audible activity, and nothing's happening. Well, you got so to push them, because the, the, the ants yeah. aren't playing back. Let's put it that way. The yeah. ants aren't playing back. Oh, and, uh, you know, the family's dead. That was really cool how the ants took out the family. Yeah, they chased them. I loved how the ants made the little boat and crossed the... <laughs> yeah. they, they made a little raft and went across the fuel and then... Because I told you, they're super intelligent. And, and this That's movie is not good. pandering at no. all, is it? No. This movie is playing everything very smart mm -hmm. and very, I guess, as scientifically accurate as a 1970s movie could be. Right. But you told me bet during the last segment that, you know, you had something you wanted to talk about college. Oh, work. yes. I learned this in college. Ants. As, as opposed to one how, how ants communicate. Now, the movie is staying pretty accurate towards how they, well, just how they interact. And I'm fine, go on. Okay. Uh, yeah, ants. Ants communicate in four different ways. They use pheromones, which they use to make little trails to and from food. That's why when you find them in their house, your house, they always go in the same invisible line. Uh, touch. Sometimes ants use their forearms and their antenna. They go up to each other, they touch their heads and communicate that way. Um, sometimes they use sound and vibration. They can actually rub parts of their body together and make these chirping sounds. Do you hear sound and vibration? Um, ants can... Did you hear that? Sound. <laughs> vibration. <laughs> no, no, this is what they did in the movie. They rub parts of their bodies together, much like crickets, and make a chirping noise. And that's the sound that Jim picked up when hubs blew up the towers. And there was all this chirping noise coming through. They're communicating. They're saying, danger, there's a guy blowing up our houses. Okay. Uh, they have eyes, and they have vision, but they do not use that. It is very poor. That didn't work out the way planned. All right, anyway, so, keep going. Um, the, the, family, the family is dead. The grandparents are dead. But Kendra, the daughter, is alive. She hit out. She's pretty 70s cute, too. Yeah. You know, she, she's, got, she, she's very 1970s cute. And there were a lot of fugly girls in the 70s, but she was not one of them. No, she was all right. Uh, but she attacks any of the ants that they captured, and Hubs gets bitten. Yep. And, uh... Yeah, because it was, it was really wise to bring her into the room. They yeah, should had no other way to go. What, to, to smash the thing? Go to the movie. I mean...
down one of the towers, taking proper precautions, of course, you might get an interesting reaction. We'll consider it. Just an idea, Doctor. Appreciated. Oh, one other thing. Yes? We've had a report about a family in your vicinity. You haven't contacted any civilians, have you? No. Lesko continues to make progress, deciphering the ant language from the tapes recorded during the first skirmish. If he maintains this pace, we should be ready for their next move. It's a rather crude language. I think if I keep building up my library of sound words, I might even strike up a conversation with them. Of course, then the ants would have to come back. We'd have to be here for a while. When's the helicopter coming? Oh, well, it'll be here. I'm sorry about that. Oh, not your fault. Listen, you really want to see something? Another way of visualizing their signals. Watch this.
Remember me? Oh, yeah. How do you feel? Oh, better. Oh, that's good. I was, um... Dr. Hubbs? Yeah. Oh, he'll survive. Okay. Well, I'm really sorry about that. I... Oh, listen, if I were you, I'd have bopped those ants pretty good myself. You know, you've got a mean swing. Well, the main thing is you're all right. We'll get you out of here today. Well, what's the matter? Don't tell me you like this place. No. My grandparents are dead, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Why don't you have parents? Well, you must be hungry. Come on, I'll get you some breakfast. Okay. Follow me through the hardware department. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure, go ahead. What do you do here? Uh, just a little research into statistical probabilities. It must be interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got uh, powdered eggs, powdered milk, powdered juice, dehydrated bacon, just like home. James? Are you all right? Uh, yeah. All right, see you in a little while. Okay. Good morning, James. As you can see, we're under siege. What the hell's that? Well, it's more than reflected sunlight. Our temperature's already up five degrees. And there's another interesting detail. How do you suppose those ants managed to build on a poison strip where they absolutely cannot live? Did you say five degrees? Mm. An hour and a half. And, of course, the sun's not yet at full strength. <laughs> now, watch this. An hour and a half. Oh, you really must watch this. This is fascinating. That beautiful adaptation, isn't it? We challenge with yellow chemistry. They respond with yellow creatures. We're gonna fry in here. Question: What do they want? What are their goals? They have no goals. Well, you saw how they disabled the truck. Listen, Hubs, I came down here to get in a couple of weeks of science in the sun. I did not sign up for a war against a bunch of goddamn ants. And furthermore, why the hell did you leave the truck out there in the first place? Bait. Bait? Well, I had to get them to attack us, didn't I? They're rather intelligent, you know. I thought you'd observed that geometric pattern in the field. You mean you saw it? Of course I did. Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you? Well, I didn't think you were smart enough to appreciate it. All your high-class bug talk. I was afraid that you'd be terrified and run away, and I need you. Well, you're right about that. When's the helicopter coming? James, we are faced with a power that has appeared and is exerting itself. We have the opportunity to study it to learn from it, to teach it its limitations. We can, in a word, educate it. You said you called. You can try the blue, of course, but they'd only readapt again. So we have to consider other alternatives. You mean you didn't call? It is absolutely vital that we give them the opportunity to try their strength against ours and learn from its consequences. I'm gonna call in, Hubs. And I'm going to tell him not only to take that girl out of here, I'm going to tell him to take me out of here, too. You, Uncle. You're just as fascinated by this challenge as I am. Ah. We're cut off. Then our success will be all the sweeter. Have you noticed how Hubs is kind of Captain Ahabbing? 
Little these bit. things. He's lying. He's manipulate. He's manipulating the people. He clearly has no. He clearly doesn't care about human life whatsoever. He, he was more interested when they were checking all the dead people in the yellow. He was more interested in the truck and how the ants disabled the truck and took out their generator than he was about the fact that he just killed these three people and the guy had an ant hiding in his, again, showing the ant's intelligence. They hid from the yellow inside the guy's body. Yeah, um, yeah. he tells the people he's communicating outside with Noah and then he contact with these people when he killed them. Yeah. Uh, Jim wants to leave and, oh yeah, Jim, sure, yeah, I called the helicopter. Helicopter's coming to pick us up, sure, and the helicopter's not coming and all he cares about is... It is the science. Uh, sparring back and forth with these ants. Well, now technically, he's right though. Because if they stop studying the ants, the ants are clearly gaining intelligence at a faster and faster rate to the point where they will take over the world. Yeah. So, so in a weird way, they're making Hubs to be the villain. At the same time, he's right to be the villain. He's the only one studying you know, it. And the only because, one knows that's right. Because if these, if these, the deaths of these three farm people will help them save hundreds of lives later, it's worth it. You know. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. You know? Spock to Kirk. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So Hobbes is technically right. And, and I, I think that's kind of a, a strange part of the script is they clearly want us to hate Hobbes, but yet if we took Lesko's reasoning, they would have all been dead already. Right. So uh, I, I, I think that's a really interesting yeah. way to do it. Is he good? Is he bad? He's doing it for this reason. Are the ants always... Never mind. Keep going. Yeah. Um, he's killing ants, these poor little ants, but these ants are driving out people, attacking, killing, and... Yeah, and, and I mean, the yellow didn't even affect them that much. A little I mean, bit, but they adapted really quick. They're like William Shatner in that regard. I mean, the yellow wouldn't have hurt Shatner, you know? How, how, how is it like Shatner? Because Shatner just won't go down. How many times has his career been destroyed? I mean, he was Captain Kirk, then he had no career. Then he was T.J. Hooker, then he had no career. Then he was making all these bad B-movies, then he had no career. And then he became Denny Crane, and now he's got no career again. But he's just himself. W William Shatner's unkillable. You know? I, I mean, to, to me, William Shatner's unkillable, and he reminds me of the ants. But okay. that's a weird aside that probably I shouldn't have said. So, all right. I, I would. Okay. Moving along. Right. You know, I really, like I said, I'm really liking this movie. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna get bizarre in a minute. It's a good man versus nature movie. Yeah, the seventies had a ton of those. So, all right, go back to the movie. Sunday, one o'clock. The battle is on. Lesko is preparing the counteraction I have indicated. The air conditioner is being adjusted to take account of the temperature rise. Human beings can exist in temperatures of 120 degrees or higher, but our computer shuts down at 90. Kendra, you wanna see what we're doing? Come on, I'll show you, it's interesting. And the name of the game today is King of the Hill. You see over there? Now we want to knock them down before they burn us out. Okay? sound. That's every sound in the world all pushed together to make one really terrific noise which we're broadcasting to those mounds out there. And 
And that's what it looks like as we send it out. Okay? Now when that sound gets out to those mounds, it bounces right back here and winds up down there. Good. Something's missing. One of the sounds we sent out didn't come back. Now let's just see if we can find out what that sound is. There it is. And that's the sound we're going to broadcast at those mounds. When we do, interesting things better happen. You think that's loud for us? Think of how those ants are going to feel. That'll do it. going crazy. Conditioner. I'm afraid I'm feeling rather. Oh. Oh. <coughs> it's on fire. Get away from it! Get out of the way!
can't believe it. To know our plans, our strengths, our weaknesses, even the one machine that everything else depends on. How could they know? This is impossible. They knew. Choosing one of my less painful moments to record these notes. Our equipment only functions now for a few hours at night. Lesko believes we're being allowed this time for some purpose. An hypothesis I do not share. If this were so, it would raise questions I had not considered. Transfer to mag tape unit three. Go straight six units. Right 120 degrees four units, right 60 degrees, four units, right 120 degrees, six units. What are you doing? I'm doing something my way. Sending a message to the ants. Yes, I've been thinking about that. The conditioning process must be working, but they're not all affected as yet. They must be informed of their losses and their suffering so they can draw the appropriate conclusions. Where is your message? On the plotter. This is 
no message. Mathematics is the universal language among intelligent creatures. If there's an intelligence there, I want it to know there's an intelligence here. The thing I love the most about this movie is 70s computers. Those things are the size of rooms. Yes, yeah, the, the computer is the entire room and it uses punch cards. Punch and cards. Do, do you know what the sick thing is? What? A computer that takes up the entire room, runs off tape, and uses punch cards is still probably more stable than Vista. <laughs> I mean, come on. Let's all admit it. Vista sucked and you all went back to XP. Same as I did. Punch cards. You prepared more stuff. So, okay, fine. Yes, I went to college. Um, punch cards, this is what they used to record you know, a lot of information. You have one of your little fancy pointers that I, I do. don't? Right here. You can have this one. Um, punch cards, I want your they stored pointers. memory, uh, all this information that we would save now on hard drives or floppy disks. This was before floppy disks came about. Punch cards, a popular one, had 80 different rows of numbers. Uh, the first part of the rows represented numbers, second part was the alphabet, and third part was special characters. Uh, parts of the card would be punched or left blank, that would be binary, on or off, to save all the information that you would want to save. Boring! Who cares? It's boring! North Coast Productions provided all of our equipment we used, and we should really thank them. Yes, we should, but that's how you're going to react? So in the movie... There could have been an ant on that thing. You're not worried that, th that this movie might really... You know, that a weird phase of the moon might really, might really make ants do stuff like this? You're not worried? No. The ants are heating up the biodome right now. And the air conditioning's kicking off because it's getting hotter than 90 degrees. Which, by the way, I thought that was pretty cool, how they reflected the sunlight back at them. Yeah, they built these, like, what, 45 degree angles, flat surface, and... Yeah, I, 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 did, I, did, I did think that was pretty damn cool, that the ants would do that. But the thing I, I don't get is... Okay, the air conditioner has been taken out by the... I mean, the ants lured a praying mantis to fall into one of the heating coils oh, or something. Oh, sure, no, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was good. So, okay, this is the part that I have a problem with. I'm willing to buy the fact that the ants are super intelligent, but how do they know how air conditioners work? Um, you see, like, I, I can understand them realizing that they need to reflect the sunlight, and, right. you know, and, and maybe take out the, the, the truck and make the little boat that you talked about, but how do they know air conditioner repair? <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, I don't know how an air conditioner works. But yet these ants know how the, an air conditioner works. So, I don't know. That's the only problem I have with this movie. But you know, there's a weird ending coming up. No, so. it's very good. Mathematical. Like this? Analysis. Uh, what? Clear. They failed to achieve. Uh, 
they will learn that we've made up our mind. How did they know? How did they know? You! I was irrational during the heat of the day. I apologize. Why don't they kill us? They roast us in here all day, dare us to come out at night. Why play these games? What do they want? I've been thinking about specialization among certain insects. Take it easy. Try to get some sleep. In every ant colony, workers, winged males, and the queen Ants organized by the queen, keeping her alive. She is the heart and soul of their lives. She's at the center. It is she who speaks. She died 
discipline, organization would crumble. War's over, Hubs. They have the power. Only hope now is if they answer our message and we convince them we're worth keeping alive. I think I could locate the queen and kill her. Lock the tracker onto her voice when she speaks. What makes you think she'd speak to you? What is it? Lights. It's just... mind we still have our hard suits yeah two of them they're sending back my message hubs there's more in a maze. Rats in a maze. It's almost like a controlled experiment in which we are the subjects. Find out which rat is the smartest, the strongest. intelligence test. Could the circle be this place? Then what does the dot represent? Could the dot be a person? Someone they want. Who could they want? They want somebody? I think so. But why would they want somebody? To talk to them. You mean they, they might be angry at someone who did them some harm? But what would they do with that person? I don't know. They let the others go free? James, come here. I believe I've located the Queen. is in there. So, we've already entered phase three in the movie, right? So that's right. what phase one, phase two, and we're in the middle of phase three right now. Do you, can you predict what phase four is going to be? Uh, probably the end game, the end result. Well, um, yeah, but, but what do you think it's going to be? I, I don't know. Because uh, I will tell you one thing. 
if you've got the novelization of this movie, right. it's different than in the movie. Saul Bass and Mayo Simon, the writer, were very unhappy with the studio for recutting the ending of this movie. According to them, the ending you're going to see is not the ending that they wanted. I've got the book, but I have, I'll admit I haven't gotten around to reading it. But supposedly the novelization has the correct ending rather than the movie, which I'm not sure if the studio wanted this more or if, or if it was a distribution thing, but they kind of want to go more for uh, we're not really going to tell you what happened ending, which, you know, I'm sorry if that ruins something, but, you know, th that's the way it is. So it's it's interesting. Let's put it that way. Okay. After the movie, I'm going to show you the trailer for the movie, and you right. can see you, you can see the hints of where this was going. The end of the trailer is very much very much has a lot of I think what what Saul Bass's original ending was supposed to be. Okay. So when I show you the trailer, but I'm going to save that because I don't want to ruin it. But one cool thing is I forgot to mention this before. You remember when the guy had his hand up and the ants were climbing out of the hand? Yeah. That's the poster for the movie. And oh. the tagline, this movie had a great tagline. The day the earth became a cemetery. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't really make sense with the movie, but no. it's a pretty, but, but you got to admit, it's a pretty cool. <clears throat> It'd be a good picture, get people's attention. Yeah, it, it's, it, I think it's interesting. But, you know, so we're going into the final segment. And Nigel Davenport, or sorry, Hubs is completely insane. He he's, he's gone all crazy from his bug bite. And he thinks killing that. He thinks he found where the queen is, and he's going to go try to kill the queen and end it. Yeah. Right. And, and then, uh, um, what's her face? Uh, Kendra. Kendra. You know, did her sacrifice really mean anything? She just ran out and got killed barefoot and got attacked. And yeah. Well, that, that's something else. Why didn't they all just put on, I mean, the, the two guys put on, why didn't Lesko just put on the moon suit right. and run? Would they have been attacked? You know? Would the moon suit protect them? It was earlier, remember, when they were out checking the yellow and stuff like that? They right. knew the moon suit would protect them. From the yellow. What about the ants, though? If the ants would somehow eat through it or, I don't know. Y you'll see. The moon suit is going to play an important role in the in the rest of the movie. So okay. just check out the moon suit and, you know, go back to the movie. Have fun. Everlasting arms. Oh, oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Used up when you destroyed the towers. All of them? Then we must devise something else. Please, I. My boots, I. Would you, please, I can't. 
You're gonna walk out of here, tramp miles through the desert, destroy a colony full of poisonous ants and a deadly queen. Can't even get your boots on. Come on, Hub, sit down. What we're gonna do is send another message. Then you must go. You must show them. We will not. Man will not give in. Did I tell you I figured out their first message? But that is you. They want you. And they shall soon have me. Sorry, Hubs. It's not going to happen your way. That hill. The queen. Hubs, you can't do it. Now, come on. Come on. Queen! of interests, some agreement. But that's not the way it's going to be. I've made some calculations about their rate of expansion using their intelligence, their powers of organization, their network of communications, their poisons, their ability to adapt genetically. I believe that after this test run, they'll move rather quickly into desert areas, taking over the countryside first, and then laying siege to towns and cities. I believe they will learn as they advance, anticipating our moves and continue to stay a move ahead. We have only one chance, the counterattack suggested by Dr. Hubs, a direct assault on their queen. Jesus, I wish it wasn't me.
we knew then we were being changed and made part of their world. We didn't know for what purpose, but we knew we would be told. So like I said, this was a pretty cool movie, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Do you kind of see how the ending of them sort of, I don't know, it's sort of vague uh, uh, on, on what actually happened, and you can kind of tell that's not what Saul Bass has been building to this entire yeah, time? Yeah, James and Kendra live, but commune with the ants now or something? I, I kind of got the impression that the ants are like living in their bodies, that like, the, like they are phase four. Okay. So, but remember when I talked about the trailer? Check out the trailer, it's pretty, pretty damn cool. In the next few moments, we will try to give you an impression of a new kind of film experience. If your curiosity is aroused, you are ready for Phase 4. They're sending back my message. What does it mean? This is no message. If there's an intelligence there, I want it to know there's an intelligence here. I believe that they'll move rather quickly into desert areas, taking over the countryside first, then laying siege to towns and cities. We have only one chance. fight a force that knows what your next move will be before you think of it.
that was awesome, wasn't it? That trailer was clearly meant for people that were <coughs> not exactly sober when they saw that trailer. That was a little one trippy, kind of quick cut and a lot of colors and stuff. It was I liked it. it. Made the movie look cool. Yeah. L let's go see what Leslie Stryker, resident film jerk, is up to. What? No, oh, is the movie over already? Was that the ending? I couldn't tell. Did we ever actually get to see Phase 4? As always, Joshua, your hideous movies leave me a nervous wreck, creating all new fears and things to be paranoid about. Now, whenever I feel an itch on my scalp, I don't think it's dandruff. I think it's Ant Spies crouching and hiding on the edge of my hairline. Leslie! Now, 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 there's no need to get antsy with me, Joshua. The people out there want to hear my educated analysis, not put up with your bumbling antics. And get a haircut, hippie! They could be hiding anywhere! Have you seen any? I feel them moving! There's probably ants there! This movie annoys me. For no real reason, some poorly explained space phenomena thingy bombards the Earth with radiation stuff. And instead of doing something sensible like creating zombies, it just turns all the ants on the planet super intelligent. The ants build 20-foot-tall towers, which in itself you'd think might be newsworthy, but nobody seems to care. The purpose of these towers remains mysterious, so Dr. Hubbs does the sensible thing and blows them up with a homemade grenade launcher. Oh, great! You just perpetrated the ant version of 9-11! Well, after the funerals, you'd better believe the war's on because Dr. Hubbs just upped the ante. The first thing they do is cut the power by blowing up the generator because they know all about electronics, and then they attack in full force. In the confusion, one of the ants bites Dr. Hubbs, which gives him a nasty case of poisoning. Over the rest of the movie, his condition worsens because he doesn't have the antidote. And they also lay siege to the facility from a distance, somehow constructing high-intensity focusing mirror towers all around the dome, beaming sunlight onto them and causing their computers to overheat. They also send a commando ant inside to sabotage the air conditioner. My god! These ants must have gone to refrigeration college or something! They even sabotage the radio so they can't call for help! How do they know this stuff? After it becomes apparent that shocking and awing the ants isn't going to work, they attempt to communicate with the ants by using their own language and using math. The ants respond by faxing back a dot in a circle, which they somehow interpret to mean the lab, even though the circle doesn't really look like the lab, and the dot as a person. Kind of a stretch. I think there are easier ways to depict a person. Dr. Lesko makes a run for it, spraying blue stuff as he goes, but eventually he falls back into the ant lair and sees Kendra, and figures out that the ants have some higher plan for them, some new step in the evolution of man and ant, and together, they will produce the Antichrist! Leslie, you idiot, stop making ant puns. What if they hear you? Ooh! Are the killer genius ants coming to get me? Wouldn't want to antagonize them. I'd be in so much trouble. Oh, hang on, I seem to be getting a fax. Yep. Ah! Oh, poop. Ah, they're gonna be chewing on him for a while. I would like you to know to our new ant overlords, as a trusted TV personality, I can be used to help round up people for your underground sugar mines. Just keep it in mind. But, so, I think I figured out the four phases of the movie. Okay. I really said the word. Phase one, give intelligence to the ants. Okay. Phase two, uh, have the dominant species of the planet, man, communicate with the ants. Establish communication back and forth. Okay. Phase three, uh, battle back and forth. Determine who is the stronger of the two. Okay. And come to a final conclusion. In phase four, the victor moves forward. In this case, the ants win and they continue to... My, pro my problem with that would be, why would the cosmos want this? So, something to ponder. Good night.